Hi everyone, welcome back. Today is a very exciting video. We are doing my top three in every makeup category, complexion wise. The next video that you see will be brows, eyes, and lips. But today we're just gonna focus on complexion. I wanted to split them up just so I can kind of talk about each thing and the video won't be two hours long. So I hope you're excited. This is such a fun video to film. It's kind of hard to prepare for because I feel like picking some of these categories is just, it's not easy. It's really hard, but I think I have a good accurate list of things here. So I hope you enjoy the video. And if you're new here, my name is Blair. I do all kinds of beauty and makeup content here on YouTube every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I hope you'll subscribe and let's get into it. All right, let's get started. I do have some coffee that I'm gonna be drinking while I do this because I've been up since like 5.30 this morning and I feel like I'm kind of starting to hit that midday slump. So I need a little bit of caffeine drinking out of my Simply Blair mug, shameless plug. But uh, if you want one of my mugs, they are linked below with my other merch. I came out with these recently. I love it. I know a lot of you have gotten it and thank you if you have and you've supported me. Thank you so much. It means everything. So I'll be drinking this. Let's get started. Let's go ahead and get started with primer. I feel like I've been testing primers pretty consistently for over a year now. And this was actually a pretty easy category for me. I kind of knew these three right off the bat. So the first one is the one I'm using today. And it's this one from Iconic London, the Underglow Blurring Primer. I will be honest and say I did not love this initially. It took me a little bit of time and using it with different things to really fall in love with this. But what I love most about this is this gives you a little bit of everything in a primer. So it does have a little bit of a smoothing. They call it blurring. I don't know that I would go as far as saying it's blurring your skin. I do think it slightly kind of smooths and just gives you a more even canvas to work with in terms of the texture of your skin, but not to the degree of some of my other pore smoothing primers. You get a little bit of the smoothing aspect, but you also get a little bit of glow from this. It's kind of that serum-y texture. So I feel like you can even see just like in the bottle, it's, it's a very glowy looking serum, but it doesn't emphasize texture. It does kind of smooth your skin and still keep a little bit of glow at the same time. I really like it. It does not have a noticeable fragrance, which I also really like. And I have noticed when I wear this, my makeup wears better throughout the day. And I've, I've tested this for months. So I'm not just saying that just after doing it once or twice. This really does, I don't know how or why, but I guess my makeup just really sticks and stays throughout the day when I use this. So I think this is really nice. Obviously they came out with this, I believe, to go with their skin tint. And it does work really well with the Iconic London skin tint, but I find that this works well with everything. I don't have trouble with pilling with anything that I've tried this with. and. I really enjoy it. The only thing I would change about it is the dropper packaging. I'm not a huge fan of that, as you probably know. But other than that, if you want a little bit of everything, a little bit of glow, not too much, a little bit of smoothing, but not extreme mattification of your skin, I really like this one from Iconic London. Moving on to probably the most obvious one, which is this, the Milk Hydro Grip. There's a reason a lot of people love this. I do also love the e.l.f. Power Grip. I think those are great. But if I'm being honest, I reach for the Hydro Grip the most of the two. So that's why I went with this one. However, the e.l.f. one is also very good. This is strictly for really keeping my makeup on. Like if I know I'm gonna be outside or I'm gonna be wearing makeup for an extended period of time and I want it to last and not move around, not wear away, this is the one that I'll go for. This is the primer I used in my summer makeup routine. If you saw that video, if you didn't, go watch it. I really love that video. But this is just fantastic. I don't know what it is, but it just gives your skin that perfect 
bit of tackiness, not in a bad way, not in a sticky way, just when you press on your skin after you've applied this, you can see the tackiness of your skin, which makes sense as to why this helps your makeup last all day. This does nothing for you though in terms of smoothing, giving glow, none of that. This is strictly for just keeping your makeup on. All right, and the third primer, I have to say this is not technically a primer, but I use it as a primer. So that's why I'm including it in this category, but it's the Merit Great Skin Serum. So I think you can really use this however you want. You can use it as primer or you could just use it as a serum in your skincare routine if you want. I don't use it that way. I use it after I've done my skincare and my SPF and all that. I do this when I would normally apply a primer. So this is a serum, as you can see. It separates, so you have to shake it really well before you use it. But I'm telling you, if you have the least bit of dryness, this is your answer for makeup prep. This is such a beautiful serum. It's extremely watery, like it is, it's like a watery consistency. It's not really a serum-y texture. I don't know why they call it a serum, to be honest, but this is beautiful under makeup. You can also use just a little bit of this, like very, very little. Tap it under your eyes before you do your corrector or your concealer. Another bonus to me is it does not have a smell. It does not have a very strong smell. I find that a lot of products like this have some type of fragrance, some type of essential oil, rose scent, floral scents. This has nothing, so no smell. It has great skincare ingredients. I know there's niacinamide in here and some other really great skincare ingredients as well. So cannot recommend this highly enough. Be warned though, the only thing about this, and I think this is true of all of them, the pump on this, I did not use this one today and I don't wanna waste it, so I'm not gonna pump it out. But when you pump this out, it can kind of squirt at you. So. The pump is not the best. That's the only thing negative I have to say about this, but just keep that in mind. It can be a little bit messy when you're pumping it out, but other than that, fantastic. All right, let's move on to my favorite thing in the whole world, corrector. Now, this one, you guys, this was tough. I'm not gonna lie. I redid this, this trio a few times before I felt like, okay, I think that's right. Based on what I like right now and what I reach for the most, I felt like these had to be the three. But doesn't mean, if you don't see one that I've said that I love on this list, doesn't mean that I don't like it still. I'm just going based on the ones that I'm using the most consistently. So we'll start with the one that I have on, and this is probably the least surprising of the three, the Pixie Color Corrector. I've been talking about this one so much lately, but I am telling you, if you have darkness like I do, pretty, pretty dark discoloration under your eyes. And this shade or the other shade, I think there are two shades. If one of them works for you and you don't have this, please try this out. I am telling you, this is everything. It is very pigmented, but it's not drying. It is a cream, but it's actually pretty hydrating looking under your eyes, which is sometimes not the norm with a thicker cream like this. But you guys, this is the perfect color for me. This brightening peach is peachy, but it has a pink undertone to it that really comes out when I apply it that you'll probably see or you've probably seen in other videos when I'm using this. I have to say this might be better than the original Bobbi Brown corrector in terms of the formula. I think I might prefer this one just a little bit more. I love Bobbi Brown, I will always love Bobbi Brown, but this one, there's something about this one, and I know a lot of you have commented when I use this one, you can really see the instant total correction under my eyes. It's kind of crazy. And the best part is it's pretty affordable. I think it's like 12 or $13. Holy grail. Desert Island product. Must have for sure. All right, the second one might surprise you. Maybe not, but I had to put this one in 
the new Huda Beauty Faux Filter Corrector in Pink Pomelo. The reason I am putting this in is mainly for the shade. I like the formula too. I think the formula is nice, but what I love most about it is the color. It is pretty similar to the Pixi color. It has some pink in it, so that is what I look for in a corrector. I want it to have some peach. I want it to have some pink, but I don't want it to be too light. And this is definitely not too light, but honestly, this is just a great color corrector. I mean, it is very, very thin, easy to apply. This is very similar to the EXA High Fidelity Color Corrector, which I know you've heard me talk about that one too. It is very similar to this Huda one. I think the Huda is a little bit thinner in consistency, and I prefer the color of the Huda one. So that's why the EXA one's not in here. Number three, okay, you guys, now I'm kind of second guessing this one, but I think, I think this is right. I think this is right. All right, number three, this one has been around for a while now. It is Bobbi Brown, but it's the stick version. Bobbi Brown Skin Corrector Stick in Bisque. I find that I reach for this one more than the original Bobbi Brown now, and I don't really know why that is, other than a lot of times when I'm doing my makeup just every day, I don't need a full, full, full coverage corrector, or I don't want it, so I'll reach for this instead. This is not the same formula as the original Bobbi Brown corrector. I hear people saying that a lot. It is not the same formula. This one is definitely thinner consistency. Now the shades do match up. I wear the shade Bisque in all of them, but this one is just a little bit more hydrating and a little bit thinner in consistency. So if, if the original Bobbi Brown is too much for you, I know that can be kind of heavy and just a lot for some people, this is the answer. This one is fantastic. I love that this one is a stick because I do really like to be able to just draw it on. I don't know what else to say about it, but I love it. I know a lot of you use and love this one and I still do as well. All right, moving on to foundations. These, I don't know, these may shock you, they may not, I'm not sure. We'll start with the one that I'm wearing today and if you've been watching me for a few months, this probably won't surprise you, but I love this one from Revlon, the Illuminance Skin Caring Foundation. I loved this pretty much immediately from the first time that I tried it. This is still, in my opinion, the best drugstore foundation. Yes, I said it. Of all the skin tints from the drugstore, of all the foundations from the drugstore of that I've tried personally, this is my favorite by far. It is beautiful. It is pretty radiant on the skin. So if you are looking for a matte finish, this is definitely not going to be for you. I have another one that is going to be for you, but this is beautiful, you guys. It is very thin on your skin. This is very lightweight. It is not thick or heavy. You can build it up and it's still not thick or heavy. In my opinion, it's kind of between a skin tint and a foundation. It's a little bit more than a tinted moisturizer in terms of coverage and just the overall look that you get, but I don't even know that I would say it's like a typical foundation. I feel like it's right in between, which is what I personally love on a daily basis. I want a little bit more than tinted moisturizer, but I don't always want a foundation on a daily basis. It is very highly underrated. I hear very few people talking about how good this is, and I think that's a crime. I think that is a shame. This is a beautiful product. It has squalane and hyaluronic acid in it. It's stunning. This is what I have on today. I actually love this so much that I just bought a new color in it. So today I have on shade 217. My original color was 117, so I just went up one shade darker in like the same undertone. All right, let's talk about the one that's not gonna be a surprise at all because I think this was in my last one and the one before this, NARS, of course. NARS Light Reflecting. This has not been dethroned as of now. I think this is my go-to when I want a foundation and I wanna look my very, very best. I want a good bit of coverage, but not a full, full coverage. 
I want it to wear well, last all day, and just look like a more perfected version of my skin. This is what I go for. I think, again, it's a very thin texture, but this gives decent coverage for how lightweight and thin it is. This is definitely the most coverage of the three that I'm talking about. And I would say this is medium at the most. You're not gonna get a full coverage from this. And finally, the one, I guess this is my newest one of the three. I've been talking about this one a lot though, so this is probably not a shock, but my newfound love is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Sheer. I bought this based on Shelby Wilson's recommendation. She did a video a few months ago recommending this and like her top five skin tints, I think it was. I saw her using this. I often like a lot of the same things that she does. So I bought it during the Sephora sale and this is maybe the thing that I have used the most of everything I bought from the recent Sephora sale. This is such a beautiful, lightweight foundation that's a soft matte finish. So if you don't want something glowy, you want some coverage but not a ton, you want something that's good for every day, does not feel thick or heavy or like you're wearing a lot of makeup on your face, this is it. This is so beautiful. Every time I wear this, I will throughout the day just keep thinking, wow, this looks so beautiful on my skin. I can't say enough good things. Again, this wears beautifully on me. It lasts. It's fantastic. If you haven't tried it, please do. It does also have SPF 19 in it, which is basically nothing, but it is there. I love it. Can't say enough good things about it. Moving on to concealer. Now, this was a category that was tough. This was really, really tough. I could not make up my mind about concealer this time. I don't know what it was. There was one that was very obvious that it was gonna be in it, but the other two, I changed out quite a few times. So we'll start with the easy one. This has to be in there, you guys. This is a new favorite, 110%. The Natasha Denona High Glam Concealer. This is shade N2. I have this on under my eyes today and um, I did apply a little bit of it under my bronzer and my blush. This is very thin in consistency, but the pigment in it is extremely good. I mean, you need very, very little of this to get quite a full coverage, which is amazing. Typically with something that has coverage like this, the formula is definitely on the thicker side. This is not, this is thin. Not like a watery thin, but it's pretty thin in formula, but you get a lot of coverage with this. It does set down on its own, so you do not even have to set this with powder if you don't want to. I do that quite a bit, and I'm telling you, it wears beautifully. It wears amazing under the eyes and on your face. So many times since I've gotten this, I've worn this on my face, and that's it no skin tint, no nothing else, just this. Obviously a little bit of corrector under my eyes, but it is fantastic. I am telling you a little bit goes a long way, so you don't wanna over apply it, or I could definitely see how it might start to look a little bit heavy on your skin because it is so pigmented, but 10 out of 10, 12 out of 10, I love it so much I ordered another shade, and I don't know, I might order a third shade to be honest, that's how much I like it. So. Number one had to be this one. The second one's gonna shock you, I bet. I know, I'm surprised too. The Tom Ford Traceless Matte Concealer. I don't even really know what to say. I'm not sure why, but I am telling you this has to be in this, in this category because I reach for this all the time, all the time, unless I am using this all over my face, then I don't, there's no need for this. But what I use this for mainly is when I wear lighter weight skin tints or foundations, which is most days, I don't try to get a lot of coverage from a base product on the everyday. I wear something pretty lightweight and lighter coverage, and then I look to concealers to provide coverage where I need it. That Natasha concealer does that for me, and so does this one. This I use 
all the time to spot conceal on my face. So if I apply something and I think, oh, I need a little bit more coverage here or here, which is where I typically do, I will take this with a small brush, kind of dab it on the brush and just tap it on where I need more coverage and it gives great coverage. It is such a beautiful skin-like finish. They do say it's matte. I would say it's a little bit more of a satiny finish. I don't think it's super, super matte, but it is beautiful. Also beautiful under the eyes. I know, I'm surprised. I'm very surprised. But the amount of times that I go in my drawer and grab this made me have to put this in the top three. And I know you're probably thinking I was going to pick NARS Soft Matte Concealer, and I still love that one. That's a great product. But I have to say, I've been using this in place of that lately. And I wear shade 1W0 Accru, and it's a fantastic shade match for my skin tone. Concealer number three is what I'm having trouble with. And I, there's two of them, and I keep switching them out for each other. Okay, we're gonna go with this one, because this is the one I had in first. Lancome, I know, Lancome. The Tint Idol Ultra Wear All Over Concealer. Again, this is a fairly new addition to my concealer collection. Now this does not give the coverage that the Natasha Denona one does. So again, I do love this all over my face, just like I use the Natasha one, but this one is definitely a little bit more uh, natural looking, I would guess, just in terms of the coverage level. This is like a lighter medium coverage at the most, but it's very hydrating, very just pretty on the skin. The concealer that I kept going back and forth with, and I still love this one, is the Shiseido. I think this was actually in my top three the last time I did this video, and I still love it. I still use it. But I felt like I had to put this in because I have been loving and reaching for this consistently. These three have been the ones I've used the most by far, I would say, in like the last three months. So these are the three that I went with. Least amount of coverage is going to be this one. I think if you have drier skin, this is probably going to be your best friend. This is much more hydrating, I would say, than the other two. And again, I love it under my eyes and all over my face. I wear the shade 215 Buff, and it's a really good shade match for me. So, All right, moving on to powders. This was another one that was kind of tough. I had a few that I kept switching in and out. The first one is the one I'm wearing today, and this one might surprise you again because this is not something I've had for a long time, but I'm absolutely in love with this and it's from NYX. The Can't Stop Won't Stop Mattifying Powder. This is so freaking good, you guys. If you want to seriously mattify and smooth your skin, try this. I wear the shade Light. think there's at least three of them, maybe more, but I was pleasantly surprised by this. I love this more than the Maybelline Fit Me, and the Maybelline Fit Me powder has been my favorite drugstore setting powder for quite a while. Not anymore. This one is, I don't know, it smooths. It really does just make my skin look almost airbrushed in the best way. It does not look heavy or powdery, but it just smooths my skin and makes me look airbrushed is the best word I can think of to describe it. This is what I have all over my face today for powder. I even brought a little bit of it under my eyes right here and I love it. 10 out of 10 recommend this and it's affordable, which is great. All right, but I had to put in this one. This has been in, I mean, I wanna say this has been in every single top three video I've ever done. The Kosos Powder. Okay, this has to be in here because I consistently still, after all this time, use this powder. I haven't hit pan on it, and honestly, I'm kind of shocked because, I mean, I use this all the time. I use it all the time. I wear the shade Breezy in this, and this one is different from the NYX because this one I would not call a mattifying powder. The NYX is a mattifying powder. This 
sets your face, but it does not mattify. It does tone down shine, but you still have some glow peeking through, which is why I really like this. I think it's unique to other powders in my collection. This one, I think it's because it's a baked formula. It sets your makeup, but it does not, I don't know, it just has a way of keeping that natural skin glow. So I'm not gonna go on about that one because I've talked about it many, many times and it's still one of my most used powders in my collection by far. Powder number three is a powder, but technically it's a powder foundation, but I'm putting it in the powder category. The Jane Iredale Powder Foundation. I have been using this, again, so frequently. If you saw my summer makeup routine video, I paired this with this Natasha concealer and this combo together. If you want long-wearing makeup, these two are a match made in heaven. But I love to use a powder foundation more as like a setting powder than I do with powder foundation just by itself. I do that from time to time, but for the most part, I like to use this like a setting powder. You get a little bit more coverage, which is nice, and especially if you're wanting, if you have concealer all over your face as coverage, or you have a thinner, lightweight skin tint or tinted moisturizer, and you just wanna make sure it stays, and you want a little bit more coverage, this is perfect for that. It's beautiful, I love it. It is more of a matte finish powder, but it, it does not ever look dry or heavy. I use it all the time and I love it. I think it's fantastic. It's refillable, so when you use it up, you can just pop this out and order a refill. I love it. 10 out of 10 recommend this for everyone. All right, we're on to blushes again. Kind of a difficult category, but at the same time, these three are just absolute loves for me. So it was difficult because I love, I love blush in general, but these three had to be the three. They just did. So we'll start with what I have on. This is probably the most obvious. Again, a product I talk about all the time. This particular shade, I know I have talked about in so many videos at this point. But, you know, I had to go with Patrick Ta. Patrick Ta blush duos in general, I love. I have almost all of them at this point, and I just think they're amazing. This one, though, is consistently the one I use the most. It's She's That Girl. So it's pink. I think they describe this as a soft pink. I don't really think it's that soft. It has a good bit of pigment to it, but it is the perfect pink if you want something that's warm, but not too warm, it's almost, I would say like a pink with a little bit of peach in it, like just a small bit. But today I have the powder on first, then I went in with the cream. I just took a damp sponge, tapped the cream on over it, and that is what's giving me the majority of the glow that you're seeing. All right, moving on to blush number two. We had to go with these. Yes, these are pretty new. These have not been out long, but I love these. I think, oh, everything about them I love. These Makeup by Mario Soft Pop Blush Veils, so beautiful. I mean, this formula is everything. It is thin, it is creamy, it's dewy looking, but not overly dewy to me. They have just the right amount of glow. I don't think there's anything else in my collection that I can say is like this. These are unique. The most amazing thing about these to me is that you cannot mess these up. I'm telling you, you can't overdo it. You do not have to worry about going in and being kind of careful and tapping off your brush and making sure you're not going in with too much or you're gonna have a mess. You cannot make a mess out of these. They are just, they're foolproof. If I had to pick one shade, don't make me do it. Don't make me pick because I love them all. I have barely blushing. I guess if I'm going by the one I reach for the most, this would probably be the one. This is the most like nude color one. This is super light, very, very natural. 
doesn't give a ton of color, but that's what I like about it. You can throw this on and throw on as much or as little as you want. And it, it just looks like you just got a hint of the most beautiful color on your cheeks. I love it. And blush number three had to go to Westman Atelier. Fell in love with these, I don't know, probably earlier this year, I want to say. Petal was the first shade that I got and I fell in love with. It is still just the most perfect pinky, rosy color. I mean, you guys, it is beautiful. It is also so beautiful on your lips. I have a very, very, very severe love affair with Westman Atelier right now. It is kind of bad because this stuff is not... It's expensive. It's just, it's very expensive, I know. But I have not regretted these one second since I got them. Not one second. I mean, the packaging is nice, heavy, magnetic. These, again, ease of application with these. 10 out of 10. You can't mess these up. You can draw them on and not have to worry about things moving around or picking up or not blending. Or you can take your brush, which is what I typically do. Get it on the brush, tap it on, and you're good. These are less glowy than the Makeup by Mario and probably the Patrick Taz too. This one is more of like a satiny finish when they set down. So these are not super dewy looking but I still love them. Petal is the one I use the most, but I also love Chouchette, which is my newest one. It's a little bit peachier. So that is Chouchette and Petal, but they're all beautiful. Honestly, I want every single one. All right, for bronzers, these were also kind of tricky for me. Two, actually, I should say, Two of them weren't. It was the third one that I kept going back and forth. I kept changing my mind. But first one that I knew had to be in here is, again, from Westman Atelier. I'm sorry, but this was another product I fell in love with instantly when I tried it. The Face Trace Contour Stick in Biscuit. That is what I have on today. I do have a powder bronzer on over it, but I went in with this first today. I think what I love most about this is the shade. So the shade Biscuit is so good. It is more of a contour color, so it has a cooler undertone, but it's not too cool. It's not like a gray looking product. It's just cool enough, and I think it has a little bit of warmth to it. So it's almost a little bit more neutral, but this, you guys, I loved it from the first time I tried it. It is very easy to apply, very easy to blend, and on my skin tone, this shade works really, really well. I do also have Truffle, which is warmer. I don't have Truffle on today, but Truffle is a lot warmer, as you can see, but uh, Biscuit, I use the most, and I love it. I, it is worth every single penny. I have a mini in Biscuit, and if and when I run out of that, I would not hesitate to buy the full size. The second one is also a pretty easy one for me. Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer. I feel like this is in most people's top three right now. I feel like this product has kind of been popular for a long time now. And for me, it still is. I wear the shade Light Medium. This is the perfect every day. I want to add just a little bit of warmth to my skin and not think about it, this is that product. It is a very, very thin consistency. It is the same consistency as the Soft Pop Blush Veils. And I feel the same way about this that I do about those. This, you cannot mess it up. This is foolproof. You cannot over apply it. it you can really apply as much as you want and it's gonna look great. It's, it's just one of those effortless, don't have to try or think about it very much at all. You could honestly probably apply this with your eyes closed and it would still look good. I love it. It's the perfect everyday cream bronzer. All right, number three is the one that may or may not surprise you. I don't know, but I had to go with this. The Makeup by Mario, again, yes, I like a lot of Makeup by Mario products, but his powder bronzers are so nice. 
They are a matte bronzer, so it's a basic matte bronzer. There is no shimmer, there is no glow to this, but this formula is so finely milled and just almost a little bit blurring. When you apply it, it kind of gives like a smoothing effect on your skin. I have this on today over the Biscuit shade from Westman Atelier, and this, this formula is just good. If I needed a powder bronzer and I didn't want to think about it too much, I knew it was going to apply well, it was not going to be patchy, this is the one I would go for. And I love the shade Light Medium. This is such a perfect color to me. It's cooler in tone, but it's not a gray. It's not a super contour color, but it does have a little bit more of a cool undertone, which sometimes is what I want. Sometimes I don't want a super warm bronzer, and I feel like that's what you find a lot. You find a lot of really warm, sometimes orange-leaning bronzers, which for some people that's what they like and that's what they want, but sometimes you don't want that. And this color in light medium is perfection. It is perfection. So today I use this lightly all over my face to kind of set that Westman Atelier face trace down and I love it. This is also beautiful as an eyeshadow in the crease just as like a one and done shadow. I'm telling you this is this is a beautiful powder bronzer. I mean the shade, the formula, it, it's beautiful. I love it so much. So number three is Makeup by Mario in light medium. And the last category is highlighter. Now highlighter is not something I apply every day, but I do have three that I feel very confident in saying are my top three favorites if I had to choose. So the first one, again, from Westman Atelier. I'm sorry, I know it's expensive, but this has to be in here because this is just absolutely stunning. And I blame a lot of you for this purchase because so many of you told me before I bought this, really before I really got into Westman Atelier products, this was the one that constantly showed up in my comments from all of you saying, you need to try Potapesh, you need to try Potapesh, you need to try Potapesh. Well, finally I got it and I'm more in love with it now than I was at the beginning, I will say that. I keep plugging the summer makeup routine video, but it's because I used a lot of these products in that video. I used this as bronzer, blush, and highlight in that video, and I loved it for that. I think this is great just as a cream highlight anyway, but on my skin tone, this on its own, with no other bronzer or blush or anything else, is so beautiful. It's the perfect bronze, a little bit peachy, but not really, really peachy, but like, look, look at that shade. I mean, it is stunning. It is glowy, but in the very best way, I don't notice it emphasizing any pores or texture on my face. And the packaging is 10 out of 10. I mean, this is heavy and luxe, comes in a cute little bag as it should for the price point, but I had to put this in because I am head over heels in love with this now. All right, the second highlighter is from Merit, and it's their Day Glow Highlighting Balm in the shade Kava. Now this I like purely for that wet skin look. So there is not much base pigment in this. It is just, it's really all glow, which today this is what I have on. I have a little bit of this on the very top of my cheeks, even though I really didn't need any more glow, so I didn't use a ton of this, but this is truly a balm. So it's very, very thin, not a lot of pigment, just that glowy, wet look. So I know that's not everyone's cup of tea, but if that's what you're wanting, you don't want a lot of color, you just want that glow, that really glossy, dewy glow, you cannot do better than this. I think they have two other colors in this. This is Kava, so I don't know about the shade in terms of how they look in the other shades, but this one on my skin tone does not add color. It just adds that wet look. And then I have one 
powder highlighter that was also pretty easy. This is beautiful. I keep saying these things are beautiful, but they all are. The House Labs highlighter in the shade Peach Quartz. This is also beautiful as eyeshadow just all over the eyes, but these from House Labs, I feel like I don't hear many people talk about their highlighters and they need to because these, again, they are a powder, but they look on your skin like a cream, even though they're powder. So I kind of swatched it in between Kava and Peau de Peche. So it's kind of right in the in the middle there. So this, this shade is a peachy color, so it's a bit of a warmer highlight, but it is so beautiful. And I love that it's powder, but it doesn't look like powder because I do find sometimes with powder highlights, you, you have to be careful with the formulas because they can look just a little bit odd on your skin. They don't blend in with your skin, if that makes sense. They can look like you've just put a giant stripe of a really glowy product on your cheek and it's not well blended into your cheeks. This looks like a part of your skin, a part of your cheeks, which I love. So number three and the final product has to go to House Labs in Peach Quartz. And that is going to be it for part one of my top three in every category complexion wise. So the next video you see will be part two and we'll do everything else. So lips, brows, and eyes. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will have all of the products listed and linked for you below. They are affiliate links. So I do make a commission if you shop through them. I will also have my merch linked below if you want a Simply Blair sip and makeup mug or anything else that will be below as well. Let me know what you thought of these picks. Were you surprised? If you were, which one surprised you? Maybe you weren't surprised. You can let me know that too, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe if you have not already and follow me over on Instagram at simply.blair and TikTok simply.blair1 and I will see you next time. Remember, simply be you. Bye.